Hi, do you want to solve crimes in the 1400? Do you want to solve crimes in the 1900? Or do you want to solve crimes in the 2400? Whichever era fascinates you more, now you can do so with the Millennium series from Chronicles of Crime. You can start from way past, move to a recent previous century, or go all the way to the future and trying to solve crimes that they span across a millennium. This is a brand new game, standalone games, series of games actually, there are three games. They all play individually, they don't, you don't need to have the base game, the base game being Chronicles of Crime, this successful game system that we have seen, enjoyed and loved, and we really, really are fascinated by the game mechanics and the narrative story that brings onto the table, crime investigation, scanning uh, technologies, scanning uh, locations, scanning characters, to trying to see where everything links, what everything has to offer to your case, and crack the case, crack the murder, crack the robbery, crack the criminal suspect. So, the new game series, the Millennium series, brings a lot on the table. It is not more, not only more of the same, because we loved Chronicles of Crime, it is actually new mechanics that come into play. Each of the games has something unique to offer. For example, in 1400, you get to have your up, um, your uh, canine companion, which follows you all the way around, and he or she scans for uh, the scent on different uh, objects to try to identify uh, suspects on the, or direct you to different locations. But this is not only it. it, you have the vision cards. The vision cards are very, very unique because they give you a lot of things to go uh, through. It is like visions, you get prophetic visions on things that happen, things that will happen, and direct you in one uh, case. I'm not going to go into the detail. On the 1900, you're a journalist. You're writing a column on a newspaper, you're trying to find different cases to solve, but there you also have things that you need to work around, like escape room puzzles, like, which means that you have to do different things, trying to navigate on a map, trying to uh, decipher a message, etc. Very, very interesting mechanic. The 2400 standalone game has another new mechanic. Actually, they have more, but I'm just focusing on one or two. They have the cyber implants. You're an agent that you drop out from the agency because they were, you didn't tolerate the crime and the injustice. So you're working on your own and you're in the futuristic Paris again. All the games evolve around Paris on the just 500 years uh, across from each other throughout the millennia. And you are an agent, you're trying to use your abilities. You have implants that you put on your uh, cyber uh, equipment and you are modified so that you enhance your abilities and you're able to scan or you're able to, to identify different things uh, and do more actual uh, things that help you to solve the, cri the, the crime scene. It has different things, it has a, a pet again, a cyber raven, it has more things, so each of those games brings something unique on the table. So, if you loved Chronicles of Crime, the core game, if you loved it and you want to see something more, more being more cases, more locations, you are in, in 1400, in the, in the way past, you are in the future, in 2400, depends on what you like, the scene you like, you can go and check any of those. If you want to find more about these individual games, or if you want to find more about the mechanics, because I'm going to explain how the core game plays by using 1400 as an example, come join me at the table and I'll show you how this magnificent system works. So this is Chronicles of Crime, the Millennium series. These are three brand new standalone Chronicle of Crime games, which use the same system from the Chronicle of Crime's original box set, but they are unique standalone games. They don't need the basic core game to work. You can get any one of those and it's a game on its own, a full experience. The different thing with these games is that they have very different twists and fresh settings from the previous setting which was in modern era in a forensic team following the adventures of uh, some detectives trying to solve mysteries and get to the bottom of various crimes. Here the idea is very similar but it has also very different settings and also very different driving motors. The Millennium series spans across the Millennium obviously hence the name from 1400 to 1900 and finally to 2400. 
these are three different unique games with the different ages for the different names of the game and all three games are standalone experience with no need of the base game. The difference is unique that in each of those, besides the era and the setting, you have also some minor things that blend well with the core game and give you a different, a completely different and whole new experience from the game. Now we don't need to speak about Chronicle of Crime because this is an award-winning cooperative game of criminal investigation which makes both the board game elements the app elements of modern technology and a touch of virtual reality. You and your team will be put on crime scenes, moving around, interviewing suspects, witnesses, searching for clues and trying to get to the bottom of various cases throughout various 3D scenes. This is a cool idea of the main base set. Now let's see how these three games evolve around it. Now the idea is simple. Chronicle of Crimes first uses a very story-driven thematic core which drives the whole thing. Now we mentioned scan and play. What is scan and play? This is a new technology from which each character, each location and each evidence piece is linked with a QR code. You know, all those barcodes that you see in front of you throughout all the locations but also on the various suspects that we're going to investigate and interrogate. This means that each character can become someone else on a different scenario, each district can become linked with a different case, and there are different things that, based on the story, which drives the whole thing, and all together linked smoothly with the QR code and the scan and play technology, give you a unique story each time. Since every character, location and piece of evidence have their own unique QR codes, you have the complete freedom to prioritize the leads that you're getting for your case solve the case the way you see better fit to do so. You can start from wherever you want, but you have to follow the leads in order to be successful. Your tasks include visiting locations in the order of your choosing, moving freely between scenes as you see fit, and you can ask suspects about the murder weapon, the mysterious files, or even something, a snack that they left on their table waiting for them to finish. You can also ask questions about what they thought about the victim, what was their relationship with them, the location of the crime and the various things that really link to the case each time. For example, if someone is trying to dodge questions, obviously you can expect that he is raised to the highest suspect level. For those of you who are not aware of the original game, this is the original game. Actually, this is all around in the city of London where a team of forensic experts are sent to crowd unsolvable cases homicides, robberies and unimaginable crimes that will not go unpunished. Proof of evidence and motive is the key to locking the suspect behind bars. Find the hidden clues in the crime scene to uncover the trail to the truth. This is the motto of the original game and this is actually the true core of those three Millennium series games which also are faithful to the original idea. But just to clear something out, this is not more of the same. For sure there are similar core mechanisms that are used in the game, but each of the Millennium series games has its own thing to bring on the table and more additional cool ideas to offer in the mechanics and the feel of the game, also into the gameplay. One of the most exciting parts of Chronicles of Crime are the 3D crime scenes. The players can find themselves dropped into right in the spot, right where the action or the crime took place. Medieval monasteries, bustling Parisian markets and high-tech futuristic districts are all depicted in the gorgeous 3D environments. You can see in front of you the 3D VR glasses that you can buy separately or you can use your own if you already have VR glasses. These were from my original Chronicles of Crime core game but they can, you can use them also fine. Basically what you do is you will You use them in a way that it's attached on your phone or your uh, tablet and you will be able to look through them the environment in 3d setting which is really really cool okay so this is a, a low resolution image from the kickstarter campaign just to show you an idea a, a very simple and first idea of how a crime scene could look like where you would be able to look around in the room by turning left or right and focusing on the different key elements, uh, evidence and irregularities that will be helpful for you to solve the case. Now in these 3D scenes, 
One player steps into the shoes of your protagonist and describes out loud what they see. The other players then need to try to find the best possible matching evidence cards from the items that are available and try to link them to the case. Each time you decide to investigate the scene, you have 45 seconds to take in as much information as you can. While you can investigate multiple times, doing so will press your event result in losing precious time and that will be bad for your total overall score at the end of the game and for your team. Now a simple detail that is important but uh, if you haven't played the game maybe it's not that obvious you can use the VR glasses so you can put them on your tablet on your uh, smartphone and have a realistic 3D look through the VR glasses into the actual 3D case or you can use a different approach you can just use the, um, the image from the crime scene from uh, what the smartphone or tablet shows to you and by tilting left or right you can actually go through turning sides and it's like turning your head to look around the different corners in the crime scene. I found that either of those cases are really good, uh, they have different advantages and disadvantages and having both actually may be something very interesting because you can in sometimes try to do it with the VR glasses because you want to really immerse into the crime scene or other times you want to have it visually uh, thrown, projected on you know a home screen or something else so that uh, maybe different people can also contribute to what they see as well. Another important note is that the Chronicle of Crime series requires a free app which you can download from Apple App Store or Google Play. Uh, the idea is that you go, you log in, you download the application, but you don't need to have internet after you have downloaded the application. You only need the app installed on the phone or a tablet, a single one does the job, and it is impossible though to play without the app. The app drives the whole thing, actually it's the thing that links magically all the QR codes into the narrative story. Once downloaded though, the application doesn't require any internet connection during gameplay, so you don't have to worry if you're on the go, on the move, or if you're taking the game somewhere with you and there is no internet access, because if you have downloaded already the app and uh, you have opened it and used it, let's say, somewhere where you had internet, then you're fine. The language can be changed, obviously, from the application, and there are some uh, very unique features that really contribute to the gameplay, like, um, for example, the, the quick scan, the auto scan feature, which you can enable from the application and you simply have it always on and wherever you point the camera of your smartphone, it is automatically scanned. The whole game evolves around scanning different things and getting parts of the story and emerging into the story for yourself with your friends. So this is really, really cool integrated. Last thing about the app, and I'm going to close there, it is one of the best apps I have seen accompanying a game. Usually the apps are not very well tested, there are some problems. This series have proved that you can have an app assisting the game, driving the game smoothly without even knowing you're using the app. I really love it. Now, I have introduced all the basic concepts of the core game, which apply both for the Chronicles of Crime original game and also for the Millennium series. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through some details, small details, on how each of those Millennium series games is different from each other, what it brings on the table and how it really elevates the game on a whole new level with all the replayability and additional content throughout the ages. Each of those games is standalone, you don't need to have the next one to play the previous one or you can even start from the two, uh, you know, the, the, the very end, the very last or the very beginning, it doesn't matter, but having played all of them, the, you can identify, and this is the promise of the game, that the family that goes throughout the ages is linked with a very, very special way. But you can even play on uh, its own, each of those, separately. So, let's start with 1400, which is the one that I have in front of me. This is a prototype that I had from uh, Lucky Duck Games, and uh, this is a preview of this one, but we're going to share a few details for the rest of those just in case you're interested. You can find all this information on the Kickstarter campaign and the material that the company is releasing is really nice and very informative. So what is 400? This is the year 400, obviously. You are Abelard, Laver, a knight sworn to the knight Charles the Beloved, and you live in the city of Paris in a family mansion not far away from the famous cathedral. Since you were a child, you had strange prophetic dreams in which you saw violent scenes of past crimes or even ones yet to be committed. Over the time, you learned that your unusual gift could be put in good use and you could start solving cases where nobody could contribute anything. No one was able to crack those cases. 
This earned you some precious reputation in the city and you are now known for the abilities to solve mysterious crimes and help people along the way. Okay, so for 1400, because this is a prototype that we have, I'm going to use a bit more extensive time to also introduce the basic rules of the game, which apply for all of the series games, but also for the core game, the original one, so that you get an idea of how the game plays. On the next um, game on the series, the 1900 and the 2400, I'm just going to get uh, give you a bit of information on the theme, the idea, the location and the different things that are added in the recipe. But here, this section for 1400 is going to be a bit longer because it will include the basic rules of the game that apply everywhere. So the game's objective is that in each scenario that you're offered a unique criminal investigation. The game is fully cooperative and all players are working together to solve the mystery. The story will develop as you collect evidence and interrogate suspects. When you feel you are ready to close a case, you go back to the home location. In this case, this is your family home, you can see at the bottom, but each game has its own home location. And then you answer a series of questions that will determine your score as a team. So let's start with the setup. The first thing that you do is that you place the location boards as you discover them to the side of the evidence board. I have already spread them across on the left and the right of the main board just to show you the different art which is gorgeous but you don't need to have it like that you just put them all on the side and when the story dictates you that you have discovered one such location you pull it out from the pack and you put it on the side of the board which means it's now discovered and available then you place the character cards and special item cards face down on the side of the board the character cards are those Obviously, they have a character, which they have an actual number 25, 02, and the respective QR code on the bottom right. And also, you can see the visual representation of the different characters, which I remind you, they could be a suspect or a perpetrator in one uh, scenario or another. So you have to think uh, regardless of what you have played before, because the QR code gives you the ability to make them make the role unique depending on the story. So these are the character cards. This is the companion dog, this is not a character card, this is unique to 1400, I'm going to come back to, the, to this uh, in a later uh, section. And the next thing you need to do is you need to also keep the special item cards, here I have three, you're going to have more obviously, because it's a prototype, keep them face down on the board, on a pile, the same for the character cards. Next you place the evidence category cards face up on the table in reach of the players. During the game, you may search through these cards freely and sort them out face up so that they are more useful to you. This is the pool of cards that your teammates are going to try to identify from your description of a crime scene, for example. You can see that the anatomy is very simple. They all have a number with a stamp on the top. They have the search icon. This is the name of the card. And this is a QR code. Again, very simple. For sure you use again the scan and play technology same as with the category cards and the location boards in the game i simply open some of them face up you can have them all face up so they are visible in, in easy access to the players and you can go through them freely next you put the main board in the center of the table here's a bit of different a difference from the main uh, core game from the actual first game in the series the chronicle of crimes in modern times here we also had locations for the items that we are going to explore and we're putting them in slots but the difference here is you have a blue and a brown reddish area these are separated in terms of one means that you are items that you have already discovered and are already in your possession and the other one means that you have some items that you had heard of but it's not in your physical possession it's not in your bag let's say also you can see that there are some slots at the bottom for putting uh, in these slots unassigned characters, meaning characters that they not go into locations. Speaking of locations, you can see that each location has a different slot area at the bottom of the location. You can see that you have the number on top of on the top left, this is location B, the one is location A on the top. You have the QR code for notifying the app that you are actually there interrogating someone or asking questions. And there are slots on the bottom of the area where you put characters that they are located there. For example, you can have, you have four slots here. I'm just pulling this down because this is only for the first top area where you can have different characters that you put in the slots while you are um, discovering them throughout the narrative of the game. This means that these guys, which are something 
have a specific role in the case are located in uh, this specific location. The same goes for all location boards around the uh, table. Next, you set the home location at the bottom of the evidence board. You can see that this is the home location. It has the home title on top. It has a home icon on the top left. And here you can find some various information. For sure, there is a QR code, meaning that you scan this when you're going to home. And here is the, the place where your family members are located. Keep in note, in the original game, the home was in a police station and you had also the help of some forensic scientists that you could go there and ask, uh, for example, cases about uh, scientific evidence or psychological profiles for different uh, contributors to your case from your own team. Here, we're in the 1400, we don't have forensic uh, agencies, so the information and contribution to your cause comes from your own family members, which have specifically specific abilities to contribute to your cause and your investigation, and they're located on your home board, respectively. So Chronicle of Crimes is one of the game, of those games that you actually just start playing it. There are not, not, different, not many rules to bog you down, not many details, it makes all full sense, complete sense once you start playing it. You can read the rules from each of those games, it's just a couple of pages, very very few rules, but the idea and uh, you know the, the driving motor of the game comes into visualization once you started playing the game. It's a very simple game, app driven, narrative driven and actually immerses you in the theme. So we start the game. Once the game is set up, we launch the app and select the story and the scenario that we want to play. The game obviously has some short tutorial investigations for you to get familiar and it is recommended that you start from those. And what you do in the game is you progress in Chronicles of Crime by scanning location boards along with characters and evidence category cards. When the scan window is displayed, you point the device, smartphone, tablet or whatever you're using to add the QR code on the card of the board and then you tap anywhere to trigger the scan. As I mentioned before, it is very, very advised uh, to use the auto scan feature from the menu of the app because this way whenever you put your uh, camera from your smartphone or your smart device it will automatically scan the location it's very very useful the group should discuss together with uh, which card should be scanned each time you scan a location board that allows you to move to this location and you scan a character card which allows you to interrogate the character once scanned the character can answer questions about any other characters or evidence to do so you simply scan these cards and the character will speak about them it is important to note that uh, the characters may never be asked about locations. Scanning one of those during the interrogation mode will finish and will move the team to the uh, indicated location instead. You can exit any time the investigation by clicking the goodbye button or the exit button and then you go one level up in the menu. You can scan an evidence category card which allows you to pick up that clue that you have spotted and any extra details become available throughout the application and the story. It will tell you if it is relevant to your case and the app will indicate if you should put it on the evidence board. You can scan one of your uh, home member uh, relatives that they can assist you. But you can see in the bottom you have the monk, which is the expert on written materials. We have the merchant, which is an expert on items. And we have the spy, which is an expert on people. The spy of the king, that is. You can scan each of those. These are located here. You can scan each of those to get valuable information about your case and progress. So throughout the game you will be discovering locations, characters and special items. Location, characters and special items should be face down until explicitly are, you're instructed to uh, uh, turn them face up on the, on the table. You have different icons for character cards that we have seen, for location cards, for special item cards and for evidence category cards which have the search icon. A new search location, when they are discovered, they should be put on the side of the main investigation board. And new characters should be placed on one of the four slots on the location board indicated from the application and the story. If at any point more than four characters discovered on any location, you can place some additional one, the additional ones on the side. You can see that now each location has four slots on it instead of three from the original core game which means that there are a lot more things going on and the story will be even more, more dense and more uh, narrative. I'm sure of it. You can see in front of you the evidence board. Now we have already flipped some evidence that in theory we have discovered from, from some crime scenes and it's in our uh, possession now linked with our case. Some locations like crime scenes will allow you to search for evidence. You put the search scene evidence 
on your application and then you can either search the evidence in panoramic view as I told you by uh, looking throughout um, the tablet or by using the 3D glasses. To do so you can put the 3D glasses on your smartphone as I have previously indicated. You have now 40 seconds to look at the scene and describe what you see to your fellow uh, team investigators. One player needs to pick up matching evidence category cards that seem to correspond to what you describe. Make sure that these cards are face up and available to all players while doing so. And when the time runs out, you can choose to have another player search for clues on top of your own search. Or you can stop. Note that this extra search will take more in-game time and will have a negative impact on your final score because the more time you take to solve the case, the lower your whole score will be. Finally, you scan all the evidence category cards picked up and the app will tell you if any of these cards are clues that need to be placed on the evidence board because they are linked with your case, or if they are not useful at the moment, in which case you should put them back in the original pile. They may come in use later on. You can scan, you can call your uh, family members to assist you with different things during a further investigation. Then you can pass the phone to another player in charge of uh, the contacts and they can scan, for example, the monk, the merchant or the spy to link these items with the different investigation. If you want someone to talk about what this thing that you think is linked with your case has to do with the whole story. As I mentioned, you can play the game without the VR glasses, but be sure to physically turn around to check the location in 360 degrees. Alternatively, you can also observe the scene by swiping left or right with your finger. In any case, I have found that all of these approaches are very useful and very well executed in the game. Okay, I'm going to do for a few minutes a small um, demonstration on how you start the application, how you get into it, and I'm trying to go in to show you a bit of uh, going throughout the different locations. Now, be aware that this may be a spoiler alert for some, so if you don't want to see any of this, you may switch your monitor for a few minutes and then come back for my final thoughts on the game and the conclusion. So be aware, the next couple of minutes will be maybe, or maybe not, it's not that much, but in case you don't want to see anything and you want to discover it on your own, uh, you better not see what I'm showing you now. So this is uh, the beta application. It also is in individual from the original application because the original one is already out in the market and it works smoothly and fine. So let me start with 1400. It says that the case is missing pages. <clears throat> in a secular scriptorium, a young scribe has been murdered. Who would benefit from the death of a man who spent most of the time buried in books? This is my first case. You can see that the difficulty is easy there. Language is English, so I'm going to click play. The game loads the specific case. Okay. So the game starts. Your name is Abelard Lavelle. You live in the city of Paris and you're now a knight sworn to our King Charles the Beloved. Then you simply click next. Ever since you were a child, you have a strange proph prophetic dreams prophetic dreams, in which you see violent scenes of the past crimes and the ones that they are yet to be committed. You have learned that your gift can be put to good use and started to solve cases that nobody else could crack. You can see that this is the screen 2 out of 7. That earns you some reputation in the city and now many people seek your help whenever a mysterious crime is committed. Tonight you had another strange dream. Take vision cards 1, 2, 3 and 4 and put them face up on the table. They depict the scenes you saw in your dream. This is one of the things that they are new to 1400. These are the vision cards that you can see. The game will instruct you which cards to take and put them face up. These are visions. In 1400, the main character sees visions of crimes happened or to happen that will happen in the future. These are very useful because they can give you some kind of insight on different cases. They may have clues, they may have details, etc. So the game instructs us to take all these four and put them face up on the table. Note that there will be many more, this is a prototype and there will be many more with the rest of the scenarios for sure. We do that and then we click next. You see how smooth the app works. As you expected, early in the morning, a messenger appeared at the door of your family house, which is the board on the bottom. He carries grim news. 
There was a murder in a secular scriptorium in the Quartier Latin, location E. Excellent. So we know that the murder happened at location E. So we have to take location E and put it into gameplay. This is location E. The game instructs us to put it into play. It gets into the side of the main board. This is when the murder happened. And this is one for the moment of the known locations linked with the crime. So the owner of the scriptorium, Bertrand Castagnier, character number 21, as you can see, is an old friend of your father. One of his scribes has murdered and was murdered and although the guards are already looking into it, he believes they are neglecting the case and wants someone he trusts to investigate the crime. So let's see what we do next. Character number 21 was identified that he is at the location of the Quartier Latin. So we need to place him on this lot because we know that he is the one asking us to solve the case and therefore he is located there as the app indicated for us to do so. The last screen says that you have to find out who murdered the scribe. When you feel you know who the killer is, you should get back to your home location at the bottom of our main board and report the findings to your family so that they can inform the authorities. And then we click next and we are ready to start. So you see that already the, the automatic scan, the scan location is activated. That means that when we put through the camera one of these locations, as you can see, it will be automatically scanned. You can also have the auto-scan uh, feature located uh, in the menu. So you can click here and activate the auto-scan. It's here actually. But I'm not going to do it though because I have a lot of material, unnecessary material on the table now. So it will automatically go and scan everything. So what I need to do, for example, is go and scan the location. So I take my smartphone, tablet or whatever and I put in the crosshair the scan um, bar, bar QR scan code. So I don't have automatic uh, scan feature located, so I need to tap holding down the button and then the new information on the case appears. Keep in mind that if you enable the auto scan, this will be done automatically and maybe it's more useful as we mentioned before. So we are at the location and we have scanned the location. This is a scriptorium in the Quartier Latin location. This is day one. You can see that there is the date indicated here and the time. Each time we scan the location, time passes by, as I mentioned before. You arrive at Bertrand's scriptorium and enter the workshop where the victim's body, 18. So we pick up the character cards, locate the victim. This is the poor guy who died, was murdered. And this location, this um, um, is uh, the victim that is lay, lying down on the floor. Bertrand, 21, his wife, and Chateau Sergeant, 12, are there. So you need to take also the new characters, 11 and 12. Let me locate them. This is his wife. I'm just putting this on the side. The victim's wife is located there and the sergeant from the authorities. So you see, you have a full house of characters in this location at the moment. I remind you, you have already scanned the location, so you're there. I click next. The surgeon gives you a nasty look and continues searching the room. Okay. You see that you go back into the main interface. So at the moment, I am at the location. I have seen who is there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for clues. So I click, I swipe, um, I click the search for clues button. It says, for example, you can use the VR glasses if you want to search. So I will start. Five, four, three, two, one. Don't look if you are not want to see any spoiler. I'm just gonna show you how the scene looks like so you get an idea. Sorry for my hand. So there you go. So what you do now is you can, sorry for the glare, you can, um, if you hold this uh, device and you start moving around, you will see that, um, now I cannot move a lot because of the angle of the camera, but you will see that the whole thing will move accordingly. So it's like looking through a window and 
you know, wherever you turn your eyesight, you will check this corner. Otherwise, you can swipe. This is so nice. Let me show you a bit closer. You can zoom in, zoom out. You're checking in the room the different areas. So I haven't done a lot of good work here, just showing you. So, do you want another player to observe the scene? Yes, I didn't manage to do anything. <laughs> but you lose more time and this has a negative impact on your total score. So let me show you again. Let me see what's there. I, I describe what I see in, um, in front of me. So for example, the chest, some bottles, maybe it's relevant, some papers on the floor, a lot of things on the floor, more pages from the scripts, a cross, a medallion. No, this is a cross, actually. Okay, you know, the books, something is there. What is it? I don't know. It is very, very, very interesting how you can have a quicker look, a more uh, careful look in the different corners and identify more items. I remind you that these are the items that you announce while you look through the screen and the other different players try to assist you by putting them in front of us for further scanning to identify if they're really linked with the case. Now, let's say for example, and this is a very simple case that I'm just, don't ignore the blue because this is a special uh, rule. I'm going to come back to this one. I'm just putting them on the table. So imagine that uh, these are the things that my fellows identified and while well, I was describing things to them. Uh, for sure there were no gardening tools, but I'm going to use it as an example of something irre irrelevant to see how the app uh, ignores it. So what you do again is you go there. Actually, I'm going to enable the auto scan. It's so much easier. Okay, so I'm going to go here. I just scanned the gardening tools and the game says nothing in this category is here. For sure there was no gardening tools in the scene. So let me try to scan the books, for example, which I located and I, I think they might be linked with the case. I click next. Then I go to the books. Okay, several books are scattered across the floor and the book stand is empty. There is no sign of the illustrated book you saw in your dream. Interesting. What's next? The surgeon interrupts you. You should leave this investigation to the professionals, he says, and leaves the workshop. Okay, so he was annoyed that I found some evidence. Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? I'm going to stop now here just because I show you, showed you how the app looks, works smoothly with the interface of the game, unfolding the excellent narrative of the story. So as you understood in the world of Chronicles of Crime, Time is very, very important. You can see the current time on the top right of the screen of the application. And when you believe you have solved the case, you can give your report to uh, your home location, describe it to your family members, and they can go and inform the authorities respectively. Some scenarios have several episodes that you can experience each of those in a single game, or you can put them together in order so that you can see the bigger picture of the story which drives the game. Now, there is a lot of material for sure from the previous core game on uh, the app, so you can go and buy more um, scenarios from your application, which is quite cool because you don't need additional physical components, and this is the beauty of the game. You can just simply buy one more scenario if you have played all or if you want to experience something different. But what is important in the game is the passing of time and the special events. So each time you scan an item, interrogate a character or observe a crime scene, five minutes of in-game time passes. This is actually what is the case in uh, the core game. It may be different throughout development through uh, in terms of uh, how much time it passes, but I think they will stick to the same uh, time frame. Each time you travel from a location to the other one, 20 minutes in-game passes uh, in the main uh, time on, on the clock. And at each time that you are scanning something, moving, rescanning, rechecking to be sure, etc. You are adding time to your total time. In some scenarios, time passing in game also means that situations will change. 
For example, characters can move to different locations or they will not be available at specific times because they go to bed or they are occupied with their daily business, etc. So you need to be careful both for the time wasting on scanning, asking for information. For sure you need to scan, but you need to manage it sufficiently, but also on the specific time of the day that you're trying to do something. So I'm going to conclude the 1400 description, which also included the main rules of the game and the same for all the series and also the core, the original game, by touching a bit of uh, what is different in 1400 and why it brings more things to, on the table. So now you can gather information not only from the evidence you find on the testimonies given from various characters, but also from the mysterious crime scenes that are depicted on your vision cards. These scenes can either be from future or from the past, and they usually involve characters and objects yet to be revealed. During your investigation, you can also count on your family members to share their knowledge with you. You can rely on your uncle, a monk who has a wealth of knowledge about written text, your sister, a merchant who knows something about almost any object you'll find, or even your brother, the king's spy, who knows a story or two about too many people that you want to meet. One more interesting thing is the dog companion, which is not, was not in the original game, and this is this card here. You have the faithful, cunning companion, which is always willing to trace a suspect for you. You just bring them, bring the items that you want him, for him to smell, and the, or the person in the location, and he will track them down. Your faithful companion follows you all the time. He's represented by the dog card that you can use at any location and he's striking dog, which means that you can show him any evidence in your physical possession, lying on the brown area of the evidence board. He can check them to see how, and you will see how the, he reacts to human scent on it. To do so, you scan the dog card and then the evidence card. The dog will have one of the following reactions. He can lead you to a location where the person in question is uh, present or was present at least, or he can point to the person in question if they're present in the current location. Interesting. Either that he can get agitated by the smell, indicating that there is a strong human scent on the object, but he can he's unable, or she is unable, we don't know the gender, to track down the person at the moment. And the final thing is that the dog can ignore the object as there is no single recognizable human scent on it. The dog won't react to a character card or a location board. He will react on evidence. Speaking on the evidence board, the evidence board has now two colored areas for the different evidence cards. On the brown area on the top, you place all the evidence category cards and special items that are in your character's physical possession. For example, any evidence found on the crime scene or given to you by a character. Sometimes, however, a character may just tell you about an evidence without giving you the actual object. In such a situation, the application will instruct you to put the corresponding evidence category card or special item card in the blue bottom area of the evidence board to indicate that you know about this object, but you don't physically possess it. If later in the game you happen to come across and obtain the object, the application will ask you to move the evidence from the bottom blue area to the top brown area. This is a new mechanic. The most important new aspect of 1400 is the vision card. The game contains a deck of vision cards, which is more than the four that you see in front of you, there are quite a few, with a nice symbol on the reserve. They shouldn't be revealed until the application tells you to do so. Each scenario starts with you having a prophetic dream about the case that you will be solving. The application will instruct you to take a number of scenario cards, for example four or five, for a specific scenario and put them in face up on the table, so that all the players can see the scenes depicted. The scenes can be either from the near future or from the past, and they will usually involve characters and objects that you will later meet during the scenario, giving you additional context and, in theory, maybe helping you to solve the case. So to summarize, new mechanics involve the evidence board, the separation on the brown and blue area, the vision cards, the family members, and the dog companion. You can go and visit the Kickstarter campaign page so that you can see the full inventory of what is included in the game many character cards, many scenarios, additional scenarios are being currently unlocked, the campaign is really really successful, There's, there was no worry about that to be sure, and much more material will become available throughout the stretch goals. So this is the first game in the Millennium series, the 1400, the one that I had the prototype and I had the chance to show you how it plays, how it works, and gave you the additional information on the additional context and, me context and mechanics that come in the game. Besides this one, which is a standalone game, you can go and dive into the 1900, which is actually the case 
number the game number two. This is again a standalone game. It is 500 years after the events. And there you are again playing one family member, one descendant from the lover Lavel family. So you are Victor Lavel, a young ambitious journalist working for a major newspaper in the year 1900, the middle of the Belle Epoque and where the era where Paris is flourishing. There are so many stories to cover. The Exposition Universelle, the Summer Olympics, the opening of the first metro station, but as a Lavel, a family famous for solving crimes since the Middle Ages, we have seen that before, you're much more interested in murder, kidnappings and robberies. So being a journalist helps you in being among the first ones to know about what happens in all the cases that they unveil and your wits are often used to give you a hint and an advantage on trying to be the first one to locate the perpetrator. The New Chronicles of Crime 1900 standalone game challenges the players not only to skillfully collect evidence and interrogate suspects, but also to solve some escape room style puzzles. These are incorporated in each scenario. There are different puzzles that you can have to, you should have to guess the right combination to open a safe. You would be able or you would be asked to decipher an encrypted message found on the crime scene, or you will be asked to trace a suspect by navigating a map. Will you be able to do those things? It won't be easy, but if you get stuck, you can ask your colleague Charlotte for help. She's running the puzzles and riddles column in your newspaper, so she can always give you a hint about the mysterious things that you're dealing with and give you direction. Again, this is a standalone game which has its own characters, but they're tied to this specific era, 1900, additional uh, evidence cards, new material, the new mechanics have to do with the puzzle solving elements that you need are introduced in the game. This is brand new, new locations, new scenarios and new things also been unlocked currently at, on Kickstarter. Then we move to 2400 into the future. This is the standalone game number three from the Millennium series. Again, another 500 years across. In total, it spans the whole series 1000 years. Thus, it's called Millennium. So again, we're in Paris, located in fo at four, uh, 24 in the future, technology has taken a giant leap forward. Androids are indistingu indistinguishable from humans and they work the streets and cyber cybernetic implants have slowly become the normal situation. Everyone is using them. Artificial intelligence plays a major role in everybody's daily life. And for many, cyberspace becomes a world that is more important than the real one. Everyone is going onto the cyberspace. The landscape of Paris is now dominated by a gargantuan transluent dome, covering half of the district. Under it, there is a private city of its own, created and ruled by the Belcourt Corporation. Only rich and privileged ones can live there and enjoy comfortable houses, unlimited access to water, clean air and controlled temperature. The social diversities, especially uneven between the different classes from the future Paris, are uh, there. Different people have different possession and different access to different new technologies. Fuel socially, social arrest is there and it is around every turn to try to bring violence into the scene. Paris becomes a popular destination for people from regions that suffer catastrophic droughts, epidemics and wars. It isn't, however, a promised land, but a brutal, merciless world where constant fight for influence takes place on every level from big international corporations throughout the political extremist groups and everyday life on the street. You are Kalia Lavel, again a descendant from the famous family. Everything is linked. You're always wanted to fight crime like your famous ancestors, so you joined the elite Belcor forces. They made you a highly trained cyber agent, but it didn't take you long to figure out that your bosses care much more about profit than justice for ordinary people. You gave back your badge, throw them in their face, and now you live in a tiny, obscure apartment in a bad neighborhood, stripped from most of your cybernetic implants. It doesn't matter. Though as you can finally do what a level is meant to do, solve crimes and help the ones who can't count on everyone else in this merciless world. This is a new standalone game. It includes a new pet, the Cyber Raven, that can analyze evidence and search the web to find information. Now we have a whole new mechanic, the cybernetic implants. There is a board with you, with 
different locations to put slots and advancements and implants that will increase your abilities, super senses that will help you find evidence on the crime scene, a tomograph to quickly check the person you're talking for cyber enhancements, or maybe a zapper to quickly neutralize any electronic device, all these are very useful for your cause. Be careful, as the technology is not always on your side. Is the character you're talking to a human or an android? Who is hiding behind the avatar set you meet in the virtual cyberspace locations? The struggle between criminals and detectives is a millennia old, but at the beginning of the 24th century, it, has taken, it was taken on a whole new level. So this, again, is a standalone game with its own suspects, own location, additional mechanisms, a lot of different things, but it all blends together. You can either play any of the Millennium Series games on its own, or play them in sequence, or combine them all, because it will all make super sense at the end. Now there you have it. This is how the Millennium Series works. Again, these are three distinctive and individual games that are standalone. You don't need to have the core. Each of those can be played on its own. You just need to pick one of those, depending if you like the 1400 era or the futuristic 2400 era. It's up to you. Each of those plays independently. It has all the materials you need to play the game. But the promise of the story being interconnected throughout 1000 years, from 1400, the first standalone, through 1900, the middle game, all the way to the future, to the 2400 game, this is something unique. I'm really looking forward to play all of them and discover the magnificent story that binds everything together and gives you a unique story throughout 1000 years. How cool is that? The promise of that is magnificent. I mean, the game system is, is, is tremendous. Chronicles of Crime, even the core game, is one of my favorite crime investigation cooperative games. It, it really came and brought something unique on the table. I have never seen a game using an application so smoothly, really, and I'm really honest on this. All the games have different applications that are okay, they have some bugs, whatever. This application is so smooth. It works very easy. It is very easy to navigate. It does a job, it doesn't freeze, it is really just a tool to help you, take you from the hand and guide you through a story, a magnificent story. And what better to share a story, a crime investigation story, with your friends on a co-op game. This is truly amazing. You will be making stories on your own, meaning that you will be discussing what you did, where you went, what you discovered, what you investigated first with your friends and you're going to try to make a high score. I really don't care if I win, if I make a high score. I mean, I know people can get competitive and uh, it's not it's not my, my cup of tea. I'm really into the story. And the time that I'm going to spend with my friends trying to crack a case, this is something magnificent. This is much, as I would say, the most qualitative time that you can get with people and a board game. This is why board games should, should exist in my opinion. Anyway, I'm just giving my opinion very loudly, but I'm really thinking that a lot of people have the same idea with me because they have played the core game. But let's talk about the Millennium series, what they bring on the table. Even if you haven't played the core game, you can start from the Millennium series because they're individual games and they are a story on their own. Even if you don't want to spend a lot of money, you can go and try pick up one, 1400, 1900, depending on what you really like. But if you really want to have them all together because you can afford or you want to, to invest i think this is one of the cases that you really need to take them all because you can start from the ages from the old ages going through the future to the future and uh, discovering individually the games and then at the end you'll say ah this is a story this is how they connect and it's like seeing a trilogy on on the cinema or something like that it's it's truly amazing i'm really looking forward to to explore everything i've no, i know that on the kickstarter campaign now they have smashed through Kickstarter stretch goals and it's no wonder because the game is is truly truly gold in my opinion the new series is not more of the same actually it's more of this of the known recipe which works but it brings additional mechanics new things that they really inject freshness in each of the series of the standalone games of the series and they are staying faithful to the original recipe this is more goodness with additional goodness on top of it. I'm really, really hyped, very excited because I really enjoy Chronicles of Crime. I'm looking forward to smash through everything from the series because I think it's one of the games that it's really a gem to keep on your uh, uh, collection. I really enjoy it. Hope I gave you a good explanation of how the game works from the 1400 example. If you haven't played the game, hope I really 
put a spark in you if you're into thematic games, story-driven games, where narrative is the core of the game. And if you like these things, or if you like what you're hearing, go and check out the Kickstarter campaign to find out more about the game and go and dive right away into the Chronicles of Crime world. It is amazing. Mm -hmm.